Good afternoon, YouTube people. I bought me a digital camera after church today. $20 at Walmart. But it does allow me to take videos and upload them to the internet. I am ready for the 21st century. Woohoo! It's actually kind of a nice little camera for $20. Um, hasn't broken yet. Um, the damn thing has like an hour worth of recording time. Or excuse me, two hours worth of recording time. So in theory, I could use this thing to film a Hollywood movie. For 20 bucks. I know nobody likes the Chinese right now, but uh, you gotta admit, they make some pretty affordable crap. But anyway, this is what I wanted to show you. This is Ferrer's DeLorean, and this is the new engine in Ferrer's DeLorean. The 2.8 liter engine that was originally in Ferrer's car is very, very sick. When I uh, drained the oil out of the crankcase, about six quarts of bright green antifreeze came out first. And we're not talking about, you know, antifreeze emulsifying in with the oil. We're, we're talking like oil and water don't mix antifreeze at the bottom so his old engine has a very serious compromise in the water jacket don't know where it is but it doesn't really much matter because he has this engine this is a Chrysler 3.0 engine it's actually a very very common uh, engine for people to use to replace their uh, 2.8s when the 2.8s commit suicide and uh, the reason people like to use these 3.0s is because um, it's uh, the same engine family so just in terms of getting the engine in the car it's much easier to use this engine than it would be to use, say, like a Chevrolet engine or a Honda engine or an engine from some other engine family. With this engine, you're using the same motor mounts. You reuse your transmission, which bolts to the engine in exactly the same way, in exactly the same place. Uh, the physical process of getting the engine into the car is um, just much, much uh, easier if you stay within the PRV engine family. And that's one of the reasons why so many people use the 3.0 as their replacement engine. Now that being said, getting the engine into the car is only half the battle. You still have to make the engine run. From the factory, these engines were all fuel injected, uh, e multi-port electronically controlled fuel injection. It was a Renix engine management system. Every person who has tried to reuse the Renix engine management system after one of these engines has been put into their DeLorean has not had success. Those aren't my words. Those are their words. And by the way, let's, let's put to bed right now an internet, internet rumor. Uh, internet conspiracy rumor. Uh, Somehow people have gotten the bright idea that I am like opposed to EFI, that you know, I, I you know hate EFI and, and yada yada yada. No. It's not that I hate EFI, it's I don't do EFI. This is what I do. If if you want EFI on your 3.0, I'm not your man. Because if you bring your 3.0 to me, this is what you're going to get. You're not going to get EFI. You're going to get a carburetor. Because that's what I do. And um, 
every person that I know who's running one of these 3.0s, there all the other 3.0s out there are EFI. This is the world's first and the world's only, thus far, 3.0 with a carburetor, a traditional magnetic field Hall Effect distributor, and just for good measure, it's got a mechanical fuel pump. True blast from the past. 1970s best technology. Um, most of the EFI boys are running um, Mega Squirt. It's a generic um, engine management system. And uh, that being said, uh, they generally have to overlay that with a second um, electronic system to control the ignition, uh, usually Ford EDIS. Um, this engine here is very, very different. Let me give you a guided tour of what I've done here. Start with the carburetor. This is a Ford Motorcraft 2100 two-barrel carburetor. It was Ford's frontline two-barrel carburetor for a quarter of a century. They used it on pickup trucks, they used it on Mustangs, they used it on Lincolns, uh, and not only they used it, but AMC used it on Jeeps and Hornets and Gremlins. Very, very common carburetor. In fact, this is Ferrer's old carburetor. This is the carburetor that used to be on Ferrer's sick engine. Whatever is wrong with Ferrer's engine has nothing to do with the carburetor. So there's no reason not to reuse this old carburetor. It's a perfectly fine carburetor. I did rebuild it. Um, but um, this, this was not the source of Ferrer's problems. So I reused Ferrer's carburetor. I reused his intake manifold. This is Ferrer's intake manifold that used to be mounted to his 2.8 engine and just kind of a historical curiosity this is intake manifold number one uh, I make my own intake manifolds and this is the very first intake manifold that I made myself this is number one this is where it all started uh, I've made 22 of the damn things and I've got number 22 here at the house. Maybe I'll make another video with number 22 next to this manifold. Because I think you'd be interested to see that the intake manifolds that I'm making now are basically identical to this one. There's a few nuanced differences, but nothing significant. Uh, for all intents and purposes, this manifold is identical to manifold number 22. So I've been making the same intake manifold for eight years now this was made in the fall of 2008 and number 22 was part of a batch that I just welded up or had welded up in um, the fall it may not be the best manifold design it may not be an optimized manifold design but it is a thoroughly vetted manifold design. There are 19 people running this intake manifold and it works just fine. But that being said, if you're going to mount one of these intake manifolds to a 3.0 engine, I got to show you these little suckers here. So you can see the spacer plates. Um, I used to call these adapter plates, but that's really not an accurate term. They're more accurately called spacer plates because they don't really adapt anything. What they do is they fill a gap that is created. When they converted this engine from its odd fire predecessor into its even fire version you see here, they moved the intake ports higher on the heads. So the intake manifold is mounted higher in the intake valley. And being a V-shaped engine valley, the higher, you, or intake valley, excuse me, the higher you go in the intake valley, the further the distance is between the heads. So when you put your 2.8 manifold on your 3.0 engine, there's a gap right here because 
the manifold is physically higher in the intake valley. So you need these plates to fill that gap. But the reason I don't really call them adapter plates, or I'm trying to stop myself from calling them adapter plates, is because they're drilled identically to the flange on the manifold. The hole that passes through this plate is the same size, the same shape, it's in the same location as the hole that's in the manifold flange. Uh, if you could shrink yourself down real small and climb down inside and, and go through the intake runner and, and come through here, you know, look like you're going through like a little tunnel. When you left the manifold and went into the spacer plate, the sides of the tunnel would be the exact same size, the same shape, and the same place. Uh, the only way that you'd really be able to tell that you'd left the original manifold and gone into the spacer plate is that the color would change. You see, these are, are newly made, so they're not all oxidized. But they'll eventually oxidize, and they'll be similar in patina to the manifold, and pretty much indistinguishable. Uh, I do make adapters. Um, one of the, the things I do, for people who want to mount this carburetor to a Peugeot manifold, the Peugeot 604 manifold, you do need an adapter for that because the throttle plates on this carburetor are larger than the Venturi bores on the Peugeot manifold and they're also located in a different place. So when you mount this to the manifold you have to reduce the size of the passage and come over towards the outer edges of the manifold. So those are true adapter plates. I'm talking about the Peugeot manifold there, not this manifold. This manifold here is made for this carburetor, so there's no adaptation necessary. But uh, I, let me show you two things on these plates. They're not adapter plates, but they do have two interesting nuances that you have to take into consideration. Number one, where you drop down to go around the spark plug. Uh, see, this is the intake port. You drop down, go around the spark plug, up around the next intake port. You will notice, if you look carefully, that the drop down on the spacer plate is deeper than the drop down on the original manifold. Uh, and the reason is, when they made this engine, they did not... Um, they, they relocated the intake ports higher on the heads, they did not relocate the spark plugs. The spark plugs are still in the same place that they would be on a 2.8. So relative to your new intake ports now, they're, they're comparatively deeper. So your spacer plates need to drop down deeper to get around the spark plug wells. So that's the first little difference to show you. The second is the mounting bolts. These are the mounting bolts that hold the uh, manifold to the heads. They did not relocate those either. So relative to your new higher intake ports, the hold down bolts are deeper. And if you look closely, you can see peeking out around the washer here, Ferrer's original holes. These are the holes that originally held his manifold when it was mounted to a 2.8 engine. But now that it is mounted to a 3.0 engine, the holes have to be just a little bit deeper, or lower, I should say, on the intake manifold. So that's all you got to do to put a carburetor on a 3.0. You, know, you need the carburetor, you need the intake manifold. Every intake manifold I make is made for a B28, 2.8 liter. So if you're going to put on 3.0, you need the spacer plates. And that gives you induction. Now where the magic happens is right here. This little jewel right here. This is a PRV shaped even fire distributor. It's an even fire distributor that is suitable for mounting to a PRV engine. Nothing like that was ever made at the factory. Uh, this particular engine had either uh, a very simplified distributor that had no provision for telling an ignition module where it was, uh, where the camshaft was in terms of its rotation. Also had no provision for spark advance. 
So, and they only used that for a couple of years before they went to the distributorless ignition. So, um, a distributor like